hello everyone welcome back to this video series on sdtm programming with r for clinical sas programmers in this series we will see how to implement key sdtm programming concepts using r we will take a quick look at the sas program for use uh, for the same concept and then see in detail about the r program please note that the complete explanation of the sas program for this concept is available in a separate playlist i will leave the link for it in the description of this video in this video, we will see how to create date of first exposure to study treatment and date of expo uh, last date of exposure to study treatment, which is RFXSTDTC and RFXENDTC. So let us take it uh, on the left hand side of my screen. So you have the SAS program that is created, uh, that is used to create RFXSTDTC and RFXENDTC. And on the right hand side, we have our R program. So before we jump in, so let us take a look at the specific uh, specification for this. So we have, we are deriving two variables. One is RFXSTDTC and the second one is RFXENDTC. So the label for first variable is date time of first study treatment. And the label for second variable is date time of last study treatment. The derivation logic for start first study treatment is given as populate using the earliest IP admin dot IPST DT underscore raw where IP quantity raw is greater than zero, which means we are being asked to use the value present in IPST DT raw from IP admin data set and use only those rows where the quantity raw is greater than zero. And if there exists more than one record, we are being asked to use the earliest date value. Similarly, for RFX and DTC, we are being asked to use the latest date from date value from IPST DAT raw where quantity is greater than zero. So this is the specification for this. So let's quickly see how this has been derived programmatically using SAS first. So here what we are doing is so we are being asked to use IP admin data set. So we are using that data set as input and creating a new data set called IP admin 01. So we know that IPSTDT raw is will be a character variable in the raw data and then we are converting it into numeric here. So using input function and the in format of date 11 and then we are converting that numeric date value again back to uh, a character representation. But this time we are using YYMMDD10 dot which is equivalent to the uh, ISO 8601 notation. So we are converting existing raw date value which is available in date 11 format to a numeric date value and then converting the numeric date value to a character date value in ISO 8601 format. And then we are here we are also filtering the records where the quantity is greater than zero. And then in the next step, what we have done is we have sorted our IP admin 01 and created a new data set called IP admin 02 to store the sorted observations. How are the observations sorted? They are sorted by study, PT and IPSTDT. So which means all the records of a subject get pulled together. And if there exists more than one record with the different IPSTDTs, the record with the lowest IPSTDT value comes on top and the highest IPSTDT within that subject comes at the end of that uh, patient records. So in the next step, what we are doing here is we are creating two data sets here. One is RFXSTDTC and the second one is RFXENDTC. So how are these two data sets created? So again, using IP admin 02, we are specifying that our records are grouped using a by statement. So here, we are outputting the first record of each patient to the RFXSTDTC and then outputting the last record of each patient to RFXENDTC dataset. So first record into RFXSTDTC and last record per patient into RFXENDTC. So in we are using dataset options to rename IPSTDTC to RFXSTDTC in this dataset, which is RFXSTDTC again. And in the second data set for creating the end date, we are renaming the IPSTDTC as RFXENDTC. So in a single step, we created two data set, one to store the earliest date value 
as RFX STDTC and want to store the last record of each patient and name the date value variable as RFX CNDTC. Now we have exposure start date or the first date of uh, treatment and last date of treatment to two different data sets. The next step what we need to do is bring this back into our uh, parent data set which is demographic data set. So we are sorting demographic data set based on study and PT and then merging RFX STDTC and RFX CNDTC uh, data sets to this data set and keeping all the records for subjects who are present in democ data set. So this is how we can create RFX STDTC and RFX CNDTC and merge back it into the parent demographic data set. So now let us take a quick look at the R program. Uh, let, let us see the R program in detail. So let us load the R program on the left hand side and let us load the intermediate data sets that are getting created from R program here on the right hand side of my screen. So let us scroll down. So uh, what do I have in this line of code is so I have my data which is used for uh, this lesson in a programmed uh, in a file named like this. So I want to run the contents of this program uh, this saved program in the current program which is used for creating RFX STDTC and RFX CNDTC. So I am using source function to run the contents present in this program named as underscore data dot r. So this is equivalent to our percent include statement in SAS. So in the next step what we are doing here is so like what we have done in SAS code the existing IP STDT raw is being converted to numeric value and then that numeric value is converted into ISO 8601 notation. So assuming that the exposure start, uh, data will not have any partial dates, we are directly making use of this conversion. Uh, if we have partial dates, we'll have to fall back onto the code which we have used as part of the ISO 8601 uh, creation video. So that full code has to be employed to create ISO dates if we are expecting some partial dates in the input data sets we are going to use. So in exposure it's 99% of the cases the dates will not be partial. So I am directly using this automatic conversion assuming that the dates will be full on all records. So let's quickly again see what this step is doing. We are creating a new data set called IP01 using IP admin and then passing it on to the mutate function to create some new variables. So DTN is being created and we are converting IPSTDT raw to a date value using as date function and we are in the second argument of this function we have to specify how our date values are organized in the input data. So D stands for uh, the day, percent B stands for the three character month and percent Y stands for four character year. So and we have the delimiter in between is forward slash. So we have to specify that way. And then once the numeric date value is created, we are applying a format function to convert it into character format. So and we are saying here that we want our date value to be structured when creating format in this way. So year followed by two digit month. So the difference for uh, three character month versus two digit month is this. So for uh, a month abbreviation, we are using percent P for uh, two character months. So we need to use percent M. So for day, it is the same here in both the cases and similarly for year. And we want the hyphen to be used as delimiter as per ISO 8601 notation. So we have achieved these two things same like what we have done in SAS. So there in SAS we have used input function first to convert the raw date value to numeric and then we have used put function to uh, convert it back into character. So as date is being used for in place of input and instead of put we are using format function here. So now let's move on to the next step. So in the SAS code what we have done is we have created two data sets uh, RFX STDTC and RFX CNDTC in a single step. Uh, we may not be able to exactly replicate the creation of two data steps within a single step. So we are duplicating that logic twice, once for start date and once for end date. So here we are using IP01 as input and creating 
RFX HTTC dataset. So we are passing IP01 dataset to the filter function to filter only those rows where the quantity is greater than zero. So in SAS also we have uh, in, in the input data IP quantity raw is a character variable. So we are converting it into numeric using as numeric function. So in SAS we would have used input function to convert some character values to numeric. So here we are using as numeric function and then we are filtering only those rows where the quantity is greater than zero and the date is not is equal to missing. And then passing that resulting filter data set further into the arrange function which is equivalent to the proc sort function, a proc sort procedure. So uh, we are organizing or arranging the records based on study, PT and DTC. And then we are passing the sorted records into a function called group by which creates groups. So here we are grouping the records based on study and PT. So, and then we are subsetting the first record of each group. So as we have grouped the records, so the records would be counted as one, two, three, four, and so on within each patient. So from that each group, we are subsetting the first record. So which is equivalent to our first.pt. So and then passing it further on to the rename function to rename the date value to rfxstdtc. So unlike in SAS rename, wherein we specify the new name on the right hand side and old name on the left hand side, we'll have to use it the opposite way. We'll have to specify the new name on the left hand side and the old name on the right hand side. And then further passing it on to the select function to keep only the required variables in this case. So we need study PT and RFXSTDTC. So we have our exposure start date or the date of first treatment available in RFXSTDTC. So let us take a quick look at IP01 and then RFXSTDTC. So here we had our IPSTDT underscore raw and then uh, here in this case we were creating our DTC value. So on one of the records here, if you see the quantity is zero and we have 16 records in total in our IP01. So let us take a, uh, I think we'll not be able to see how this record itself got deleted because that all the process is combined into a single step, but we are filtering only those rows whether those quantity is greater than zero as part of this step. So let us take a look at RFX STDTC. So here we have first one record per patient and we made sure that that value is coming from the earliest record. So let us take a quick look at one of the subjects records for 1004. So let's go back to here. The RFX HTTC is coming as 5th Jan 2010. Let us see if that is the earliest date available for that subject in IP01. So let us filter for 1001. So we have four records in which we have 5th Jan, 12th Jan, 18th Jan and 25th Jan. So 5th Jan is the earliest record. So this should have come as RFX HTTC, which is coming as expected. So let us now move on to the next step wherein we are creating our RFX and DTC. Again here we are using IP01 as input and then passing further into the filter function, filtering only those rows where quantity is greater than zero and date is not null and passing that filter data set further into the arrange function to sort the observation based on the values present in study, PT and DTC variables in ascending manner. And then further passing it onto the group by function to create groups within study and PT. So, and then further passing it onto the slice function to subset the last record. Say for example, if a subject has three records, uh, what will happen is the end function would return the value of three. So for that patient, how does the slice function evaluate to slice of three? So the, if there are three records, when we say slice of three, that will be equivalent to the last record of the patient. So we are kind of subsetting last.pt. Let's take another example wherein we have 10 records for that patient. So when what does n function return for that patient as we have grouped it based on study and PT is as the subject had 10 records, n function would return the value of 10. So that slice function for that patient would get evaluated as slice of 10. 
so as there are 10 records we are subsetting the 10th record so that is the latest record or the last record for that patient and we have made sure that that last record will have the latest data available by using an arrange function before this so here we are kind of sub subsetting the records as equivalent to last.pt using this lies and n function combination and then in the next step we are renaming DTC as RFXC and DTC and then selecting only the required variables study PT and RFXC and DTC and then in the next step we are merging our RFXST DTC and RFXC and DTC to the demo data set so in SAS within merge we can merge more than one data set uh, more than two data sets within the same merge statement but in uh, joins of our tidyverse package we will not be able to join uh, more than two data sets at one point so that's why we are first joining demo data set in left join fashion to rfx stdtc based on the values present in the variable study and pt and then to the resulting data set we are joining rfx andtc again based on values present in study and pt and then so as discussed in some of the previous videos so in sas the character missing values are represented with null character string so but in r the null character string is not equivalent to the missing value so whenever we are merging our rfx dtc and rfx dtc for the patients who are only exclusively present in demog but not present in these data set the resulting variables rfx dtc and rfx dtc will have r specific missing value which is called na so we here in this mutate function what we are doing here is we are converting that r specific missing values or the na values to null character strings so we are we are checking whether the rfx dtc value is missing or na and then setting it to character null string if it is the case otherwise we are using the existing rfx dtc and in a similar processing is done for rfx and dtc as well so here we are in the next step we are sorting again the final data set based on study and pt and then keeping only the final required variables which is study pt rfx stdtc and rfx and dtc so let us take a quick look at rfx and dtc for subject 1004 we have seen that 25th jan was the last date of exposure so this should technically come as rfx and dtc for this patient let's quickly check that for subject 1004 the expected date was 25th jan and the programmatically derived date was also 25th jan so this is coming as expected let's go to the final output let's also pull the final output for which was generated using sas so here we have subject sorted from based on the values present in pt 1001 to 1008 the same ordering is followed here so let's quickly read out the dates for the patients who have the date values populated in rfx stdtc 5th jan 25th jan it's the case 5th feb versus 12th feb yes 2nd march versus 10th march yes 15th april versus 6th may again the same so 27 27th june to 11th july 27th june to 11th july so we were able to replicate the creation of rfx dtc and rfx and dtc using r program to the output which was generated using the sas program i think i was comparing our data sets on both the sides but let's quickly correct that and then see so let's open the final data set here so so this is the sas output data set so i have made sure filterable this is tidyverse yes uh, let's quickly check again randomly for some numbers 5th jan 25th jan 5th jan 25th jan 27th june 2010 versus 11th july 2010 27 june versus 11 july 2010 yeah so the output is replicated and using our program to that of the sas program so this is how we can make use of r to create exposure start date and exposure end date in demographics domain thank you for watching and keep learning